welcome, welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Okay, I have to stand in the middle. <laughs> okay, so uh, we will talk today about biometrics, of course, surprisingly. And uh, biometrics, we have been in, in the field of biometrics for more than 15 years now and we have some experience. And we know that biometrics is, uh, is a difficult subject, but also we have found a way how to make it a little bit easier for you. So today I would like to go a little bit under the hood and explain you how we are able to be a good partner and to stay a good biometric partner for you, for enterprises, for governments, or for different institutions. So you will see a little bit more what biometrics used to be. Uh, I hope you will see also what is currently the challenge we have, we are facing with, and uh, what the biometrics will be in the near future and where it's heading. Uh, but very first, I will start with, uh, with a short survey. So you have seen it. I see that many of you have voted already. So let me... I need some help. The, okay, the clicker is working. Okay, good, so maybe you see the poll we have prepared for you. So please uh, be honest and answer and choose the answer number, number one. <laughs> okay. I mean, there might be more answers that are correct, so. I'm not sure if you are able to pick more of them. So, what is biometrics? Okay, it's best done with Innovatrics. Thank you. And uh, it's a technology for recognizing all kinds of animals, including humans. So I think this is obviously uh, true. It's something that never works 100% right. And uh, I would say yes, uh, we know from experience there are always some error rates and mistakes and probabilities and it's uh, never uh, like on and off logic uh, match or non-match, but there are sometimes uh, shades uh, in between. It's hard to develop and that one is, uh, that one is also, I think, correct. And it's uh, almost impossible to implement correctly. So okay, maybe we can freeze the poll now. And thanks, uh, thank you for uh, recognizing we are a good partner, so that's, uh, that's a good start. But uh, today I will focus on something else, and uh, the subject is uh, it's, uh, something that uh, is very hard. So, okay, uh, doing biometrics is really hard, and doing great biometrics is even harder. And I think it's hard for us as uh, developers of the primary technology uh, it's hard for integrators because it's something that uh, deals with humans and humans are so different and various and it's, for me, uh, I, I would say it's surprisingly, sur how it's, it's surprisingly surprising domain. It's, so it's always, we always see some kind of surprises and uh, I would like to tell it openly that it's something hard, but there is a way how to, how to solve it and how to be good at uh, working in the biometric uh, domain. So the first thing is uh, it's uh, based on probabilities. So maybe uh, I see some familiar faces, maybe some of you did mathematics studies in the past. So who loves probabilities and who loved statistics at school? Okay, I see three, four, five, six, seven hands. <laughs> not many, <laughs> not many. Yes, we are, we are used to uh, think in, uh, and, and we are often, and I am also a, a developer and we like uh, binary logic, we like on and off and bits are either zero or one. It's never something in between. Uh, but unfortunately, biometrics is not like this. Uh, we always have to, when we announce uh, accuracy figures, it's always about error rates and there is false accept rate and false reject rate and uh, failure to find and failure to enroll rate. And it's never simple to explain. I can never explain it uh, to my parents, for example, properly. And uh, when you start with biometrics, you think, yes, uh, okay, uh, you take a photo, you look, look at it and you see that whether it's the same person or not. But is it really like this? 
then you have identical twins and maybe sometimes you are in doubt. Okay, is it the same person or maybe yes? So what's the match probability? And then you will want us to tell you what's the number, what's the matching score? And we, we will say, well, we will tell you maybe it's 90. But what does 90 mean? What does it mean, really? Is it 90% matching score, so it's good, or so it's bad, it's high enough or not? Uh, how confident are you about it? And now we are starting to talk about probabilities, and you see that maybe 90 is not enough, maybe it's enough. And it depends really on the context, and it depends on the situation. So I will not give you a um, more detailed explanation now, but you can see the, the problem with this, and you can see that it's a little bit different uh, uh, to, to the standard IT, uh, for example, and if, if you are a developer, uh, when you start and when we do onboarding in Innovatrix, at the beginning we always uh, uh, talk about probabilities. And then some people have to uh, look at it second and third time, and then we learn when we, uh, when we see those cases really, and, and we really then can understand that yes, it's, it's about probability. In some context, if you have a phase that is matching, but you don't see all the details. Maybe it's good enough because the population size was, it's only, it's the most similar person out of 100 persons, so you can be quite confident it's the right person. But sometimes it's uh, the most similar person out of 100 million persons, and that's different because you can have identical or very similarly looking persons in, in, in a big uh, population. Uh, the second problem with uh, biometrics and the second reason why it's very hard and can, can be hard is, uh, oh, I have to stand here, that's why. Okay. I think there is some issue with the clicker. Okay, good. Uh, modeling humans is uh, very challenging. So first, we are very different. And uh, we are different because there are many races, and you have heard about racial bias, and biometrics uh, or facial biometrics has had issues with, or has sometimes these issues with people of color, for example, uh, that are harder to be recognized for different reasons. Sometimes your finger, fingerprints are not equal. Some people have very difficult fingerprints, washed out fingerprints work, or manual workers typically are hard to be recognized. Uh, some scanners are not working correctly with them. And that's something that's adding to the complexity. But okay, it makes also our job, because if uh, all biometric solutions were 100% accurate, then uh, you wouldn't uh, work with Innovatrix, you would work with any, any other company. So I'm, I'm glad it's so difficult. <laughs> Also, with irises, you have uh, sometimes, maybe you have seen the shaking eye syndrome. Uh, if you look into the eyes of a person, the eye, eye is constantly shaking or moving. So I have learned that it's called nystagmus. Uh, so it's, it's a medical condition, and it makes all irises very hard to, to be recognized. And that's why maybe to solve the problem you need multi-modality, multiple biometrics combined together, and you need to combine probabilities, and then maybe at the end, the, the, end, the probability of error is, can be very, very low, like 0.0000001%, but there always is a probability of error. That's, uh, that's what's interesting with biometrics. And something we are struggling with uh, is that there is never enough data and maybe this was not such a big challenge in the past because we used to do computer vision or our field was a part of computer vision and uh, algorithms were handcrafted manually. So you needed some amount of data for doing statistics, but you didn't really need an extremely large amount of data. Today our field is called artificial intelligence or we are part of artificial intelligence. So we talk a little bit less about computer vision, more about artificial intelligence today. And artificial intelligence, as you all know, and these are neural networks, and to train neural networks, you need a huge, huge amount of data. Uh, typically, you, you need for, for reason reasonably to train uh, a network, you need an, at least 100 or 10,000 cases. 
and you know, of course it depends. Sometimes you need 100,000, sometimes you need millions. If you really want to tune your algorithm, you need more than millions, hundreds of millions, for example. Of course, uh, in the real life, when we talk to our partners, we'll talk to you, and you have an issue, uh, you have a problem, and, and there is some, someone who can't be recognized, or there is a situation, or a face that's not detected, or iris that's not detected, we ask you, could you please send us uh, such an image? so that we can simulate it and we can replicate the problem. And then the answer is, we are sorry, but we have uh, GDPR rules in place and we can't really send you this image. Sometimes you are able to help us and thanks for what it is and you will send us one or two images. And then we tell you, but we need 10,000 images. Uh, we have a problem then. <laughs> So we need to find a creative ways how to go around this and one of, uh, one of the possibilities is to do data augmentation or another possibility is to generate uh, and here neural networks can also solve the problem. They can now today generate the data and you have all seen those uh, pictures that were drawn by artificial intelligence and we use similar techniques in Innovatrix and that's something my colleague will talk about uh, tomorrow, so that's uh, that's a very interesting presentation. I invite you to attend. So data privacy and GDPR makes it oh, very hard for us as well. Okay, uh, well, so you see it's hard, and uh, on top of this, uh, it's uh, the definition of biometrics is changing. It's all, all it's all, it's. Uh, why is it changing? When, when we started, the first, when I talked to someone and, uh, and, told, and, and told him, I work in the domain of biometrics. And then the second question was, oh, so you work for, for police probably, or you are trying to arrest some criminals. And uh, it was quite hard to explain that no, not really. And this was 15 years ago, so this was different. Uh, the, the, the context was different. And we, well, since the beginning, we were focused on uh, uh, civil a ABCs or AFIS at the beginning, and we, we didn't really, um, the criminal was uh, just uh, the, the side, um, on the side. But it was difficult to explain. But today, uh, you see biometrics uh, every time, uh, every day you are recognized multiple times when you unlock your phone or when you enter some building or, uh, okay, I think if, if you really count the, the, the number of uh, times you are your either phase or probably phase the most is the most common, uh, you see biometrics all the time. And this means biometrics has entered in our lives and uh, the number of usage uh, scenarios has grown exponentially. Uh, it also means for us that we have to add to and we are not only creators of algorithms, but we create also some surrounding technology. And it also means uh, for us uh, growing complexity. We, have m we, we need more technology, and you are asking, you as our partners, you need more technology bricks uh, or technology solutions uh, from us, and this is another challenge. So let me show you how it looked before. So I think basically this is the image that defines the biometrics in 2004 when Innovatrics was founded. So it was basically recognizing uh, faces, fingerprints, uh, sometimes irises. Faces didn't work or it was just more like a scientific uh, concept but in, in real life faces were not very accurate. And uh, the most common case was verification, as one-to-one -one verification. First, you had to state, okay, my name is Jan, and then you put your fingerprint and you are verified and access was granted. It was the beginning of the identification, but the identification was uh, very limited in, in terms of the search speed. Uh, the speed levels were like uh, one to 10,000 per second, 10,000 matches per second and the identification was just, I would say, beginning. Uh, civil, civil ABCs were not uh, so common at that time, but it was starting. And then you had basically two platforms, uh, PC or servers, and sometimes uh, edge computing for, for or embedded, we called it embedded at that, uh, that time. Uh, you had to put your algorithm on ARM9 uh, so that you could open door uh, easily. But 
Maybe there was Magellan Card. So maybe some of you remember Magellan Card uh, benchmark from NIST. But okay, that was it. Of course, this is still true, and we are still uh, doing uh, this basic uh, research in uh, facial and fingerprint and uh, iris matching. And we will talk more in details about where we are, where we stand here. We have uh, quite recent benchmarks uh, from from NIST uh, about fingerprints, uh, fingerprint matching, and also. Just today, uh, new IREX, uh, iris, uh, IRIS matching results were published, so we will talk about this as well. And we plan to submit, uh, resubmit our facial algorithm by the end of the year. So it's coming, and this is our homework, and we have continuously to improve the algorithms and be sure we are on top, we are good at it, and uh, we are among, among the best uh, players, uh, so that you can rely on us. But the now it's even more complicated or complex and uh, biometrics has evolved and we have new challenges. So let me show you what they are. Okay, so this is a little bit more complex picture and uh, you can see that, <coughs> well, we still have modalities and face fingerprint iris, but the number of platforms is bigger because everybody wants to use his smartphone and you have Android, you have iOS, you have iPhones. Sometimes you don't like uh, a native app, but you want to use a web browser. And uh, today, web browsers are quite able to, uh, or very, they can support v video streams or cameras. So you can add biometrics to the web browser directly. So of course, it's another challenge. You can't just have an SDK and tell to the customer or to the partner, look, you do the integration part, so we have to follow and, and add new functionalities here, and that's what we do, and that's where we spend our development days. So when we, were, when we started, we were three people, and basically today we are close to 200, but you can see the complexity of what we are doing today. All those uh, aspects are something we are covering in more or, or less details. A very big topic, uh, that didn't exist before is liveness. And you all know about liveness, and this was caused by the, way, by the fact that biometrics is used so often, and sometimes people try to cheat a little bit. And that's why I was saying modeling humans is difficult, and modeling cheating humans is even more difficult. So, of course, we are we're trying to replicate all those uh, cheating scenarios. By cheating, I mean maybe using a fake photo or using a photo of, of a different person and trying to open a bank account instead of, of the right person. And for this, you need some kind of liveness check. You need to be sure that f before you, it was solved uh, very easily because there was always an operator. Uh, it was, biometrics was used in controlled situations. Today, uh, the most uh, interactions with a biometric solution happens remotely, where there is no human in the loop. No human in the loop means you need to build the, the trust or you need to trust the, the, the guy who is trying to, you to get into the system somehow else, and you need really to do the liveness check. And there is not just one liveness check, there are many. There can be a passive liveness check where you just have to look into the camera and do nothing else. Maybe there can be an active one, you have to smile, you have to move your head, or there can be a combination. You look at the camera, in the camera from some distance, then maybe you move a little bit closer to your phone, so it's like something in between. You don't need to do any movements, but just your hand has to move a little bit. And it really depends on the situations. Or another liveness scenario is uh, you have an IP camera and a guy is approaching the door or turnstile and you have to decide, should I open the, the door, yes or no? And you don't have a close-up image, you just have an image from distance with less details and may, maybe the lightning conditions are not ideal. On the positive side, you have multiple images because the guy is approaching towards the camera, so there are pluses and minuses. So that's why it's, it's a whole range of liveness solutions or algorithms that we have to support, we have to develop, we have to benchmark. Uh, video anal analysis, that's uh, something that surprised us uh, by its complexity. 
and we didn't see that it, we didn't think it would be so so difficult but we have discovered very soon that um, the amount of data you have to process is very big because you have so many uh, bits of information in every frame. So you need first to do the de detection, you have to do it fast. So maybe you want to save also on the bandwidth, so you don't want to send the full frames everywhere. You, you need to do, to do it on the camera directly and so on. So. At the beginning, our approach was, look, uh, uh, you can use our iPhase, it's a very general SDK, and you can implement it on your own. But we have found out that it's very difficult for you. And it was also difficult for us, so we have built some layers around it to help you or to, to, to succeed together. And today we support these scenarios uh, in more details, and uh, my colleagues will talk about, about it later. And a very big subject I did not uh, cover yet is digital identity. And uh, maybe tomorrow the biometrics will not be called biometrics, but it will, it will be called digital identity. And uh, very often those became, become syn synonyms. So what does it mean? Uh, when you access some service remotely, your identity has to be verified. And we have found out that uh, first we we have been asked, okay, could, can you recognize the, the, uh, and check whether the photo on the ID card is the same as, as the live image of the person? And we, we, we said, yes, yes, this is easy, we can. But then the second question was, but can you also read the content of the ID card and check whether it's a genuine or not? And we had to develop some new technology for this, of course. It's not biometrics itself, but we have expanded our definition of biometrics. For us, it's already biometrics, because it's very close to the biometric use case. It's a uh, part of computer vision or AI, whatever you prefer. And uh, so this is, a, this is what, these are the technologies we do as well, so that it's easier for, for um, the end uh, partner to deliver the whole solution and data, data collection, data cleaning, and we have our own data cleaning team, for example. We, have, uh, we are trying to generate artificial data, and we are trying to uh, survive in the, in, in the world of, of GDPR and do things uh, correctly, even though uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult. But of course, if you deal with biometrics and if you are a biometric developer, you need some data. That's, that's for sure. So we have ways how to make it anonymous, how to uh, clean identities from the data, and, but, and these are things we are discussing internally, uh, so, and we, we try to do it correctly. Okay, uh, maybe let's, uh, let's see how this looks in real life. So, uh, okay, sorry. No, we have to go back. Can we go one slide back? The clicker is struggling with it. No, one. Oh, okay. Uh, I think one slide was missing. Okay, no, no problem. So. Imagine you are a pharmacy. If you are a pharmacy, you would like to uh, sell your goods uh, remotely, so you need to verify, and you would like to use web-based enrollment. Uh, you can do it with our tools, and we have developed uh, web-based components, uh, but uh, the challenge, and why it was hard for us, the challenge was to make it small, uh, to make it uh, easy to download, because the banks told us, look, our app, cannot have more than 30 megabytes, 50 megabytes, whatever. And we were like, yes, but for biometrics itself, you will need uh, 20 megabytes. And uh, they didn't like the answer. So we had really to redesign uh, what we did. And we came up with our own neural network player. We have uh, uh, squeezed uh, the size of, of neural networks. 
and we managed to, uh, in, in most scenarios, and it depends, of course, of what you need. Uh, if you need liveness and what level of liveness and so on, but we have a solution that is under one megabyte, and this is a game changer because in st if, imagine if you are in some country or in a village and do your connection is not good, and if for onboarding uh, it takes you one minute, you will just stop the process, you will not continue. So it has to be fast, and we, you cannot, you are not, you cannot download a lot of data. So making it small was a challenge. The second thing was also good user experience and auto capture done right. Because at the very beginning what we were doing, you show your face and you press the button. But when you press the button, <laughs> you shake your mobile phone and uh, it, the image is never sharp. Uh, so this is not a good way. So we had developed auto capture procedure and there you have to be sure you don't take the first image you see, but you need a high quality image. So you have to wait a little bit to check whether the guy is looking straight into the camera, whether the, the sharpness of the image is good and the lightning condi light conditions are good. But you don't want the guy to wait too, for too long time as well. So you need to compromise. And, uh, as, and on top of this, you need a good user experience because uh, that's something that didn't exist before and what we are using this circle, you can see that circle there and so people naturally try to be in, in, in the middle of it, but it took us some time before we understood that this is a good uh, visual element and there are no like best practices for biometric uh, enrollment components so we had to try, we had to do some studies and uh, to see how people are reacting. Of course, in different countries, people are reacting d differently. I, I remember the situation when we showed, the, we had this active liveness where you, th there was a dot moving, and we showed it to a partner in Indonesia, and typically, uh, people in Slovakia were following the dot with their eyes. But for him, it was just, just much more natural to move his head and follow the dot like this. <laughs> Who would expect that? <laughs> So that's, uh, that's the user experience thing you have to, you have to think about. Uh, another situation, imagine you are, you have some secure, secure uh, place, uh, imagine you are a factory or even uh, or an airport, for example, and you want to secure the perimeter. You want to be sure no unwanted person comes in or there is no loitering happening or you don't have suspicious persons going around. So this kind of situation. So again, you need to analyze, uh, and these are the technology components you will need. You have to analyze video feeds, you need to be, you need to uh, track uh, all those faces, and you need to build up a data database with all the information about what was happening so that you can uh, do the offline uh, investigation later on. And it's, it sounds very simple, but it's not, it's not easy to do. Uh, when I am saying this, we are not developing final solution, but we are developing, developing platforms. Uh, so we have a platform that has to be quite universal and uh, that has to work in, in different situations and for different use cases. So the same solution works for, the, for access control, but it can work as also as a monitoring solution for, for a situation as I was describing. Here the challenges we have been facing uh, was like uh, how to make it fast enough, how to do the data processing on camera directly. And we had to contact uh, uh, manufacturers of uh, so-called AI accelerators or vision processing, uh, vision processors and vision chips and we have to put our software inside those chips. And this is really something very new that didn't exist uh, five years ago or three years ago. So we had to find, we, we found a few bugs there, we had to talk to them. Uh, I'm talking about manufacturers like Ambarella and this kind of chips. So it seems simple, but it's at, at, at the edge of the technology of what is possible in the life. So we had uh, to, to spend a lot of effort but hopefully this is done and you will see it in the afternoon or later on. And I think this can save you a huge amount of time that you don't have to repeat this process, but you can have uh, the solution that's, uh, I would say, half working or working for your scenario 
directly uh, from us. So it's very complicated, and I hope you, you agree with me that biometrics is hard. It's hard for us, it's hard for you. It's, uh, I hope it's not hard for, for the users. It has to be simple for the users. And the question is how do we manage uh, to uh, survive in this world, how we do it? So let me give you a brief answer. And there are three elements uh, I would like to show. The first is we focus on long-term vision and uh, we don't see this uh, uh, as, as a short uh, story, but uh, we want to be here for a long time because we think experience and collecting experience is very important. Uh, how we manage to do so, we remain and we are always, we have been independ an independent company since the beginning. We don't have investors, so we don't have the pressure. We will not like uh, quit the company tomorrow. So you can rely on us that we will be here in five years, we will be here in 10 years. That's the plan. Uh, I have a proof. We are building a new headquarters here in Bratislava, so that's a visualization. So we want to be here uh, with you. We want to be here uh, for some for some time, for sure. That's the plan, and nobody is pushing us to, you know, to to do the exit or, or whatever. And and I understand that this technology is complex. And if you are building your solutions with our technology, and if you knew that we will not exist in one year, okay, would it, would it be a wise investment? Probably not. Uh, we have to cover, and we are a platform builder, so we have to cover all kind of situations, all kind of use cases. And how we do it, we, we talk to you, we listen to you, and you come with very surprising uh, questions and very surprising challenges. And this is very good for us because then we, we know what to develop. We try to do it in a universal way, so your feedback is always very welcome, and uh, I'm always very glad when I talk to customers because it's so inspiring. And I think this is in our DNA, we have to do it. And this helps us to not to stay in the ivory tower, but to build biometrics that can help people. And we, so we need to understand technology, of course, but we need to understand your business and build a universal solution out of it. So we are not focusing on uh, custom uh, scenarios or we don't want to solve one particular case, but we are always looking at the way how to make, how to generalize it, how to make it uh, possible for all our partners to use this kind of technology. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, so we need to understand the, 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 your business case so that we know what is really the need for, for the biometrics in it. <clears throat> so in summary, great biometrics is, I think, you agree there is some science part, uh, but I don't think it's 50%. It's only maybe 10 or 20% of science. It's 30% of engineering because you need to develop smart components, you need to make it small, and you need engineering talent, uh, you need to support those products, you need to find bugs easily and fix them. So engineering part is very, uh, very important and I see some colleagues here, so I want to thank them for this. But there is a very big part and that's exchanging with partners and I think it's 50% of success and that's why we are here today and tomorrow and we would like to hear about what you are doing and inspire, uh, get inspired and inspire you and uh, uh, I hope we all be, we will be inspired uh, with what, what everybody is doing. So this is, this is it. Thanks, uh, thanks for this and I hope we will all be successful and we'll build a new world based on trust and based on biometrics. Stay with me, stay with me, come, come. I don't let you go that easily. Uh, quite a company you've built here, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how are you looking forward to seeing all of your partners here together physically in the same space after such a long time? Uh, 
Yeah, it's a little bit uh, of stress, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's the public speaking, I know. No, I mean because uh, we were used to those remote exchanges, but it is very good to be here as humans and to exchange, to talk to each other. So we will have a dinner today. I am. I'm. I hope you will all attend the dinner. So uh, this is. It's. It's good. It feels good. That was my next question. Was what are you looking forward to most over the next two days? But I see it's the party. Clearly. Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> then I'm done with my questions, sir. <laughs> and, uh, yes, and presentations as well. Uh, I will learn about our technology from from my colleagues and. Uh, <laughs> It's always good. Eh? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Ladies and Thanks. gentlemen, Jan Lunter.